plan? I don't need no stinking plan. Actually, you do. VLAN implementation, creating the plan. By the time we're done here, we will create a plan to roll out the updated VLAN structure and subnets at VIA. This is the part of the process that every network engineer loves to hate. They know they need a plan, but they're so anxious to get started, and it's so difficult sometimes to just slow down and think through things, that most of them get a couple things scratched on paper, and then they're like, okay, I'm going, and they'll get into the configuration mode and start changing all the configurations on the fly. I've been there, I've done it enough to know that's bad. And someone once said something that stuck in my mind like an arrow in my chest. They said, Jeremy, if you would just slow down a little bit, you could go a lot faster. And after years of trying it my own way, I finally decided that guy was right. A little planning can save you a lot of time. Now this project is gonna be especially fun because we're moving from what I would call a small office phase one VLAN config, as in we rolled out VLANs at our office because just about everybody has VLANs, but it was done in such a way that it was just a, a small, let's make it work kind of mindset. And that goes for both the VLANs and the subnets. In addition, our switch configurations have just gotten muddy. It just happens over time if you've got network engineers, especially multiple ones, jumping in and trying different things. Like if you look right here, we've got all kinds of playground subnets. That is things that people were setting up and it doesn't really map to anything anymore. As a matter of fact, I think there's hundreds of little VLANs after this that someone just implemented on a whim. So what a great time to also do a configuration cleanup. Now where we're going is clear. We spent plenty of time designing all the new VLANs that can now expand instead of just going VLAN 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have VLAN 10, 20, 30, etc. that can grow in a plus one configuration. We've designed our subnets to scale, each one of them fitting into a summarizable block that can wrap up the whole office and also allowing us to expand not only in VLANs, but also in subnets. Worst case scenario, if we truly outgrow even this entire summarization block, we can assign another block that all comes from the global strategy we talked about earlier in the series. If you haven't seen that, I'd encourage you to go check it out. So how do you plan something like this? Well, first off, I wanna make sure that you understand, I wouldn't call myself a project manager. I love project management. I love reading books on project management. I love thinking about new ways to do things more efficiently, but there are some people that just naturally do this. Like my wife. She doesn't think, I need to create a plan. She creates plans because that's who she is. She's a planner. I plan because I realize it will cause me much pain if I don't. It's more of a self-preservation. So when I show you my method right here, I want you to know this is a method from one network engineer to another. A guy who doesn't naturally just run and create giant spreadsheets and plans, but knows he needs to do something functional to ensure his survival and sleep. So for me, I always start with a whiteboard. Now, you may or may not have a whiteboard in your office. If you don't, honestly, I'd encourage you to get one. There's something really tactile about just grabbing a marker and starting to scribble your thoughts as you're like, okay, first thing I need to do, and sometimes I'll just draw up, okay, I've got my switches, I'm gonna have to update the VLAN configuration. Just, just the act of drawing starts stimulating my own brain to think, okay, where am I? Because what I found in myself and a lot of people like me is it's really hard to figure out what you're gonna do without actually doing it. I've said that and I've heard that so many times. I'm sitting with someone and we're trying to put the plan together and they throw their hands in the air and they're like, well, if, if, I, would just, if I was actually doing it, then I'd know what to do, but I can't sit here and figure out all the steps I'm gonna take. So what the whiteboard does for me is get me as close to doing it as I possibly can. Obviously you can always set up a lab, but sometimes it's difficult to create a full lab that encompasses the real environment. So I'll ask myself the questions. What am I doing? Who does it impact? How do I test to make sure it's all working when I'm done? And what tools do I need? <laughs> I can't tell you the number of times I get to a location and it's something trivial, like, oh, I forgot a screwdriver, or I forgot a screwdriver that has this size bit. And I end up wasting hours going to hardware stores because I just didn't have something trivial. Nowadays, I just keep a bag with me that has just about everything I would need for most network situations. So as I ask these questions, I'm writing it out on the whiteboard. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you can see it, but it's that whiteboard literally right behind me where I start my initial brainstorming. Now, if you're curious, this is a closer view of what that looks like. 
what I do is I start just by drawing a basic sketch of what I'm going to be doing. Now, this could just be me, but I found it to be super valuable for a lot of other network engineers, is just by drawing it and looking at something, you're like, oh, uh, oh, connection right there. It's, it, it's just, we're so tactile in a lot of the things that we do. Just seeing it goes, oh, that connection, I, that makes me think of, the, oh yeah, that's, I'm gonna have a server plugged into that that's providing DHCP, I, f I forgot, it. oh yeah, the, the WAP, you know, as you're, as you're drawing the different things, uh, you go, that, that's gonna do uh, radius into the uh, into the the oh yeah radius that's a thing and so you just start it starts jogging your thoughts now making this list on the whiteboard that you can see right here I, you know I, I need to add the VLANs to switches it's in no specific order it's not complete in any way but it's enough for me to get started on paper this is what it ends up translating to now you might look and go well. That's more than you had on the whiteboard. <laughs> yeah, it is. Because once I actually start writing down all the stuff that's on the whiteboard, I go, oh yeah, there's this, there's this, there's this. And I guarantee you this list isn't even enough. When I thought about changing the IP addresses, you know, I'm like, okay, well, the router, switch, I need the WAPs, the printers. And I was like, oh wait, our monitoring system's going to go, cr oh yeah, I have to update the monitoring system to make sure I'm monitoring the new IP addresses once I do this. And and what about, oh, that okay, the server, oh, and the server's a VM that's hosted on Hyper-V. Oh, I've, I've got it. So all those things just start flowing it's it's almost like i've i've broken you ever have that uh writer's block you remember when you're in school and they're like write a report and you're like staring at the blinking cursor like what do i even write the the fact is that it usually takes about half an hour of just staring at that blinking cursor walking around all that kind of stuff for a lot of people and then it's just like it starts flowing it's like you've opened the floodgates of creativity or whatever you want to say there right and some of you are like those floodgates never quite open for me. Um, but, but the point is, this is where I say, okay, here's my what, here's the who it's impacting, here's how I'm gonna test it, I need to make sure I do all these things. Here's the tools that I'm gonna need, and I, you know, I just said, hey, I got my network bag, all these different things, I need a labeler in case I need to label things, and then, <laughs> whoops, I put test on there twice. Obviously, because I really wanna make sure it's tested. Actually, I think I just copy and pasted because I was running out of room. Let me fix that. There we go, that's better. All in two nice columns. So now, just like my initial screen said, I've created my checklist, I need to define the phases and figure out my timeline. Now that's just a fancy way of saying I need to figure out what I'm gonna do and when I'm gonna do it. So I take all the stuff that I put on this list and start putting it into individual phases. The way I do that is I think, what do I need to do first? Sometimes what helps me is to actually start logging into the devices, do show running configurations, look at configurations. It, literally is a work of art to try and spur some of that creative planning sense inside of me. Because again, unlike my wife, it's not natural. So I think to myself, okay, a phase one is an assess, clean up, and implement the switch VLAN configuration. And I can do that now because that feels really good to me. I don't need to schedule that. I can just do it because it's not gonna cause any outages, at least it shouldn't, if I do it right. Then I need to communicate with internal external folks of the date, time, and impact that I'm going to have as I do the following phases. Because after I do that cleanup, I'm going to have to implement the new VLANs and IP addresses. That's going to take everything down. How long is it going to be down? When's it coming back up? What do I do if things aren't working? That's what folks, people, human beings need to know. I then broke it into two separate phases. And I didn't do this initially. I initially said, well, let's just do all the VLANs and IP addresses, right? But I thought, you know what? I don't have to do that. I can actually implement all the VLANs with a much lesser impact than changing the subnets and the IP addressing of the office would have. So maybe this is just a small before or after work event that I do to implement the updated VLANs, make sure that's all working and has no issues. Then I implement all the IP address changes. Now, it isn't that easy if your VLAN and subnettings have to go hand in hand. That just means a bigger outage and more work all at once. Phase five, final communication. Let everybody know, hey, we're back up. If you have any issues, please tell me. I put that phase there as its own phase because otherwise I forget. Now, you might be thinking, are we done? Still no. We've gone from initial brainstorm thought with small picture to spur creativity to a raw list of thoughts at least categorized into bigger picture buckets, into phases of thoughts, taking all those individual line items and say, okay, I can divide those up into chunks, into finally implementing what I call my configuration checklist. And you notice that I've moved into Microsoft Word. Some people prefer Excel for this, and that's totally fine. I'm right there with you. This is actually just a table in Word. The reason I like Word is for some reason, and this may just be me, as soon as I see that Excel spreadsheet pop up, my ability to think goes dead. 
I usually find myself trying to create some formula or template or something that looks really cool because I'm an engineer at heart. I'm not a planner at heart. So by going in Word, I know that I'm just going to type stuff. I'm not going to play with Excel formulas. I'm not going to create some new documentation thing that I thought I could use for the hundredth time. This is it. Here's my phase one. Switch cleanup and VLAN configuration. What I will do as I generate these lists, this is, this is literally my checklist, and I also, I, I forgot to mention, I also put it in Word so I can print it out. A lot of times I'll be somewhere and I'll take down the internet access. Now, I haven't gotten used to tethering my cell phone yet and putting everything in the cloud, so I just find sometimes if I have a piece of paper that I'm literally writing on, it helps me. Maybe that's not you. So this list I generate by doing a show running configuration on my switches. Just by seeing some of the inconsistencies and stuff that we've added and removed over the years, this one gets really easy to generate. And then I start thinking as I'm staring at that running config, okay, how do I need to implement my VLANs? Both beforehand and actively. I'll start labeling things that I can do before I actually get to the site. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty cool with doing things during the day when I'm supposed to be working and not as cool in doing things at night when I'm supposed to be sleeping. So I'll try and do as much pre-work as I can to just get to the evening and be able to copy and paste things in the configurations. Now, are these lists complete? I hope so, outside of that forgotten parentheses right there. Um, I hope that they are, but I can almost guarantee you I've missed something. That's why I have these little blanks that I keep right after this, and you'll, you'll see this is also why I use paper, is I'll be scribbling all this thing. I'll be on switch two and be like, ooh, I forgot about that, and I'll put a little note on, you know, handwrite either next to this little box, I need to, blah, 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 and then I'll go back and do it for all of them. I find if I don't do that, if I don't keep something in front of me, I'll fix it on one and then forget to do it on two, three, five, fifty. I mean, sometimes I've got four switches that I'm going to be configuring which is really small. Sometimes I'll have 10 or 15 switches that all need the same config, and I'm human. I'll forget something. And when I plan this, I'll only plan the first couple phases. That's why I divide it into the phases. Sometimes it's too difficult for me to think that far in advance into the actual work steps that I'm going to be doing. By the way, what you're looking at right here is not a project plan. A project plan would have this as the line item. Okay, we're going to do our switch cleanup. The stuff that I have underneath there is the work steps. You would never create a project plan around work steps. And that's one of the reasons I think network engineers get so frustrated when they get into a project planning meeting. The project manager sometimes cuts them off and just says, no, I don't, I don't need to know all that detail. Just, just give me the big picture. And the engineer is like, well, that doesn't help me. Of course I know I need to configure my switches. So for me, and again, I speak only from my perspective because I'm only one man. I will generate the work steps for just a couple phases in advance. Now, if something jumps out at me, like, man, this is gonna nail me if I don't consider this for the future, of course I'll handle it then. But it's only after I've done this that I can truly think of a lot of the things that I need to include in my work steps for the other phases. So that has now created a plan to roll out the updated VLAN structure and subnets at VLAN.